In this video, we'll look at the leverage buyout or what we call the LBO model. Now, it's not a separate valuation technique. Rather, it's a way to determine the impact of capital structure, purchase price and various other parameters on the returns that are expected by the private equity fund from the deal. So in a way, the LBO model provides the maximum price that can be paid to the seller while meeting the target returns for the providers of financing. The LBO model has three main input parameters, the cash flow forecast, the expected return from the providers of financing, and the amount of uh, financing that's available for the transaction. So for the free cash flow forecast, this will be uh, prepared by the management of the target company. So a lot of due diligence has to be done on the strategic, commercial, financial, legal and environmental side to determine the reliability. Okay, and uh, they will be uh, they will prepare this forecast based on an explicit forecast horizon that corresponds to the holding period of the PE firm. Now, the value creation chart will summarize the sources of additional value between the exit value and the original cost. So of course, the value creation comes from a few factors, like the earnings growth that arises from operational improvements and enhanced corporate governance. Then there is multiple expansion that depends on predefined or uh, pre-identified potential exits and also from optimal financial leverage and the repayment of part of the debt with the operational cash flows before the exit. So each component of the value creation chart should be carefully considered and backed by supporting analysis. And this will frequently come from very lengthy due diligence process. Now. From the original cost or the initial investment, this can be funded from different sources. Okay, we will have equity, which will form a small percentage of the investment, and this will um, normally come more from the management uh, and also the PE firm. Okay, the management will usually have a small percentage uh, in the equity, and then uh, the PE firm will be holding most of the equity. And besides uh, common equity, there's also preference shares and also debt. And for that, there is a senior debt, there is high yield debt, and also mezzanine. Now let's look at an example. Let's say in a particular LBO based acquisition, okay, there will be an initial investment of $800 million in total. Okay, and this will be funded by equity, which is $20 million. 90% from it comes from the PE fund, which is $18 million, and 10% of it is from management. And there's preference shares uh, with a 15% roll up. So it's only payable at exit. And this is 100% owned by the PE fund. And this will be 300 million in total. And senior debt will be 480 million. So that adds up to 800 million. So we will assume that the exit happens in year six. Okay, so the exit enterprise value will be 1,360 million. And at exit, the senior debt outstanding will be $288 million. So with that, we'll calculate the IRR for the management and also the PE fund. Okay, so we'll calculate that separately. Now, so first of all, we have to uh, list down. Okay, we have the equity. Now, uh, we have the equity portion. Okay, and then we have the preference shares. And we have uh, senior debt. So for equity in total, we have 20 million. For preference shares, there is 300 million. And for senior debt, there is 480 million. Now, of course, uh, this equity will comprise of 90% from the PE uh, fund and 10% from management. So in other words, if I were to break it down, okay, if I were to show the breakdown, so for management and for the PE fund, management will contribute 2 million and the PE fund will contribute the rest of the 18 million, okay, which sums up to 20 million and 20, 20 plus 300 plus 480 that adds up to 800 million so all this is at time equals t equals to zero which is uh, the initial investment then uh, when then fast forward to the exit period which is t equals to six so let's see what happens so the the projected exit value will be 1360 million okay so senior debt by then will be repaid uh, and there will be remaining of 200 and 88 million. Okay, so this is a debt reduction and uh, usually we paid off using operational cash flows 
and then for preference shares okay there uh, there will be no preference dividends paid during that period so everything will be compounded up to the exit so this will be 300 million multiplied by 1.15 to power of 6 okay so that will be equals to 693.92 million okay so equity uh, which is the remaining amount so if you work backwards so 1360 minus 288 minus 693.92 million okay so that will be 378.08 million okay so that's the equity value uh, at exit now of course out of this portion we have to find out how much is attributable to management and the PE so for management it is 10 percent okay so that's uh, basically 37.81 million and for the PE fund okay that will be 340.27 million okay so that adds up to 378.08 so just this is 10 percent and this is 90 percent right so now with that we can calculate the uh, IRR for the management and for the PE fund all right so I'll just show this graphically so we have uh, these numbers now okay as we calculated previously the management equity the PE equity the preference shares and also senior debt and this is for entry and for exit point which is in year six so now if you are let's say looking for the IRR for the management okay so if I'm looking for the management's IRR now so we have to know what is the outflow so the outflow for management equity is negative 2 million okay which is at time zero and then they will exit with 37.81 million okay so on the timeline is this zero and this times this is the exit point and then so there's an outflow of 2 million here and there's an inflow of 37.81 million in year six so with that we'll look for the IRR so using the TVM function uh, the initial cash flow will be negative 2 million so we'll set that as PV and PMT is zero there's no cash flow in the interim uh, n is equal to 6 and uh, FV is 37.81 okay so we then compute your IY which is 63.22 percent okay so that's 63.22 uh, percent okay so that's that's per annum now what of the PE fund so the PE fund of course uh, contributed equity as well as preference shares Okay, so the their contribution here will be 18 plus 300. So that's their total investment. Okay, for the period. So initially, their initial investment is 318. Okay, so that's preference shares plus common equity. And then uh, at exit point, they will have the PE equity, which is 340.27 plus the preference shares. So that's 693.92. Alright, so that will be the what they will get is 1034.19. Okay, so this is an exit. So what's the IRR for? That? So again using the TVM function, so n is equal to 6 and your PV is a uh, negative 318. FV is 1034.19. Okay, and uh, PMT is 0, so we compute IY, so that's 21.72%. Okay, so that's 21.72 percent right so that's the IRR for uh, the management and for the PE fund